For centuries, philosophers have been contemplating the relationship between the mind and body. And let's face it, reaching a clear understanding of the relationship seems as difficult as reaching enlightenment through meditation. So let's tackle the ancient topic by taking the views of two philosophers and applying them to something that we can all understand. Modern day technology in the form of computers. So let's start with Descartes. Descartes would say that a computer can be split into two separate components. The hardware, which represents the body, is the physical components that make up the computer, such as the monitor, mouse, and keyboard. The software, which represents the mind, is simply put, the set of instructions that makes the computer work. It is the software that understands and interprets actions, such as clicking and typing. Although they comprise the same thing, the computer, Descartes would argue that they are two separate independent entities. This concept is known as dualism. He would argue that this is because the hardware and the software have different properties. For example, the parts that comprise the hardware, such as the keyboard and mouse, will eventually wear out. Over time, as a person keeps typing on a keyboard, it will get dirty, the letters may fade, and the keys may even stop working. The same thing can happen to all of the other parts of the computer, and eventually, they too, will have to be replaced. Software, however, will never wear out in the same way. It'll never register an A keystroke as an E keystroke, or shut off the computer if you press the spacebar. Software in perfect working order will always stay in perfect working order. Even if you break the monitor and half of the display spazzes out, the software will be A-OK. -okay. Descartes argues that the same concept can be applied to our mind and body. Just like hardware, your body wears out as you get old, except there's no replacement. Just like software, the mind doesn't wear out. Bodily problems such as a broken arm or leg won't break the mind. Since the mind and body have these different properties, Descartes believes that the two are separate, and it is these components together that make a person. Now, moving on to Putnam. Imagine that we have a magic box that can add numbers together. If we give it the numbers 2 and 3, it will add them together and spit out the number 5. Putnam would describe this as an input process output system. Looking back at the magic box, the inputs were 2 and 3, the process was addition, and the output was 5. In terms of functionality, Putnam would say that a computer is nothing more than just that. A computer takes in some sort of data, processes it using sets upon sets upon sets of instructions the computer was given, and does some sort of action. Putnam calls this input process output system functionalism. One other point to note is that for one process, the same input will always give the same output. For example, if your computer's instructions are set in a specific way, pressing the start button will always open the start menu, pressing the button with this on it will always turn off the computer, and pressing K right now will pause the video. Putnam argues that the mind and body are related in the same way. A person's mind has a complex series of instructions that tells the body how to respond to every single possible input. For example, let's look at the feeling of pain. If a person steps barefoot on a pointy object, the input for this would be a sensation that his or her body would be in pain. The mind would take this input, run it through a complex set of instructions, and ring out the output of this value. The person would think something along the lines of, God Christ, I don't like this feeling. Let's try to avoid it. The person would then immediately lift up his or her foot to relieve the sensation. So, out of the two, which is better? While Descartes' interpretive view of computers sounds good and all, it actually poses a problem for the mind-body dualism. Known as the interaction problem, the problem questions how the mind, an intangible object, can interact with the body, a material object. If you think about it, that's a pretty valid argument. We sometimes like to imagine that ghosts can push objects from shelves. But their inability to interact with tangible materials would make the ghost fly straight through the object. You may then wonder, why don't computers have the same problem? Simply put, computers have an interface that allows the exchange of information between the hardware and software. It's sort of like a translator. The interface takes hardware information, such as pressing the A button, and converts it to data that the software can understand. In turn, the interface will take the data the software would give in response, and convert it to a set of instructions, like display the letter A on the monitor. The same cannot be said about the mind and body. Such an interface doesn't exist between the two. Or is there? Perhaps when science and technology progresses far enough, then maybe we will be able to discover a link between the mind and body. Okay, that about sums it- wait a moment. If there exists an interface between the hardware and software, then how is that any different than saying that the hardware provides the input, the interface and software provides the instructions, and the hardware again displays the output? Even if a link were to be discovered between the mind and body, functionalism still would not fall as a possible theory. The mind and body interface would still behave as it is explained in functionalism. One thing that can perhaps be said about both is that functionalism is a more thorough explanation than mind and body dualism. While Descartes' argument only specifies that the mind and body are separate, 
Putnam's argument takes those two and defines a specific role for the both of them. Therefore, Putnam's functionalism argument is a better explanation of the mind and body.